All right, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of a uh, VGF Strat Corner podcast. Uh, so, I am your host, John, uh, on the boards. Uh, my real name is Scott. Uh, I don't introduce myself enough, and I should probably continue to do that. But uh, our guest this time is uh, Sid Lord, here to uh, discuss uh, probably one of the, uh, I would say, the less popular characters in the games, Athena. Um, so first, let me introduce my guest, uh, Sith Lord. Say hello to the people. How's it going? So, uh, I, with every one of our guests, I always uh, like to give a little like background, and so that uh, in case they, you know, they don't know who you are, you can kind of uh, fill them in a little bit. Uh, uh, give your resume so that they're not so nervous about listening to you talk <laughs> and taking your uh, your word for whatever it is we're uh, we're about to say so kind of uh, fill us in like uh, when, when did you start playing Tekken are you mainly a Tekken person do you branch out a little bit uh, and like your experience with uh, with this character um, I actually got my start kind of it was a kind of a coincidence really I was into other games at the time Street Fighter 2 Mortal Kombat I think Killer Instinct was out at the time but uh, I was visiting my brother. He was just back from uh, a tour in Okinawa. He was in the Marines for a while. And we were down there in Oceanside, and uh, we walked by an arcade. And he's just like, hey, check this out. And, you know, he walks in and puts his money in a Tekken 3 machine. And I'm like, you know, all right, cool. And he just, he picked Nina, and he just grabbed, grabbed a hold of her and broke every bone in his opponent's body, you know. And I had never seen anything like that in a fighting game. So after that, you know, I had my attention, and uh, he showed me the book that uh, W.C. Maxey and some other guys wrote, and there was just so much to it that uh, as I was skimming through it and seeing all these, these moves and what they did and combos and chain throws, and it just was ridiculous, and I was hooked after that. Nice. So obviously, Zafina wasn't in uh, in the game when uh, when you picked that up. So did you start off with Nina and then then branch out, or? No, you know he, my brother, he's actually on Zaibatsu too, Spinal Villain. Uh, he he was like, you know, you need to start with the basics, which I guess anybody that knows the game would probably tell anyone else trying to learn the game, you need to start with the basics. And uh, I ended up picking up Law and Paul for a little while until I was comfortable enough with the game. And then I moved on to King and Heihachi. And uh, I pretty much stuck with them until Tag came out, which was like six months later. So and so um, you, you're you on the, the West Coast, right? Uh, have you always been on the West Coast? Because I know a lot of our players, they've bounced around. I've actually had uh, quite a few uh, guests on the podcast that you know used to be East Coast, now they're West Coast, vice versa, and like everyone bounces uh, around. For my, as far as my teching days go, uh, I've always been here in Nevada, Carson City, Reno, etc. So Thanks. I don't get the chance to, to get to the West Coast very often. Unfortunately. Hey, so, um, so I mentioned, uh, like, right when we started, you know, that, uh, you know, Zafina is probably one of the less popular characters. Uh, probably. And very underappreciated. <laughs> and I would say uh, that's probably true, like, any character uh, in Tekken all time. So, um, and quite, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but, I, like, the only two big names that I can think of who play Zafina are Clint and Unconquerable. And I know Unconquerable doesn't take the game all that seriously, um, right, and is there anyone else out there that we should probably know, like that you, uh, for Zafina players or people who are trying to pick up Zafina, that they should you know hunt for those videos for those players? Uh, I know. Uh, I don't know about big names. I know Unconquerable is pretty pretty big. Uh, I don't think he's is he real big in the Tekken Six days. I haven't seen him post hardly at all in the four. No, he's uh, uh, he's kind of like. Um, uh, uh, Tom Hilfiger sort of guy now. You know, he's like, he's an old schooler, big name. Uh, you know, uh, what's the, the best word for it? Um, I don't want to say legend because that kind of puts people on a pedestal. But, you know, like those Tekken yeah, names where, like, if you talk to people, they're like, oh, yeah, back in the tag days, you got Hilfiger, John. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was aware of, uh, of who Sean was uh, back then. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. he's in that uh, era, and those guys um, – you know, they, they play in tournaments every now and again, but they're not really on the boards very much anymore. Uh, you know, they don't, they're not really part of the, the forum scene 
but they're out there, you know, th- they hang with the groups. Um, yeah. But as far as I know, like, Sean doesn't take the game seriously all that much. I mean, he'll go to big tournaments and whatnot just to hang with people, but, uh, and he plays, and, Which is yeah, all- and you know, he's, he's one of those players that, uh, you know, he's just so good that even if he doesn't put time into it, his fundamentals are so good that he can still kind of make a splash when he goes to tournaments. So, you know, it's that, that kind of deal. <laughs> but, uh, as far as I know, though, I mentioned Clint. I, I'm pretty sure that he's he actually, you know, uh, is is with the scene and, and uh, you know, doing the training session thing and, and everything. But those are the only two names, really, that I know. Who play. Yeah, as far as big names go, I can't think of very many others in the United States. Uh, I know a couple other people that have picked up Zafina over the last year or two, uh, Straw, CDDT, and some other guys. Uh, but as far as, you know, veterans or legends, I'm not so sure. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, well, uh, uh, I guess we, we got that out of the way. So um, I guess tell us a, a little bit uh, of your Zafina background. Do you, uh, I, I presume uh, just because she's Zafina, you probably haven't taken her to a tournament at all, but uh, do you get a lot of experience with her, uh, like with the crew that you have around? Or I, guess, I, I don't know about a lot of experience, just the average amount, I guess. <laughs> I, put, I put my time into her, but I have a couple other characters that I put a lot of time into as well, uh, Wang, for example. and uh, So you're kind of out there on the fringe with uh, the characters that uh, you don't really see very often. It, it can be really, it can be hard, it can be frustrating, because uh, you might get, you might put a lot of time into, say, Zafina, and you might go up against a good Marduk or a good Bruce and put some time in with them, and then you might not get another chance to mess with them for another two or three weeks, or, or longer. Cool. Okay. Well, then uh, I guess let's just uh, jump into the Safina stuff. Um, so usually, what I do is uh, I ask our guests, you know, what do you think the strengths and weaknesses are? Um, uh, just kind of general, and then we kind of uh, bounce off of that. Uh, this is one of those characters. Admittedly, I- I'm actually I'm not a huge fan of just the character design and, and everything. So I, I haven't really had any interest in her whatsoever. So most of what you're going to say or tell us, I'm sure, is just way over my head, never heard of it or whatever. Um, really, the only thing I know is Safina is, uh, what is it, down to a really long-range low or whatever it is. Oh, uh, that's Mac. Yeah, it's a it's a useful move in, in combos, yeah. I'll say that. But uh, otherwise, I, I mean, I'm completely oblivious to this character, other than the fact that she has lots of stances. I really don't know what the strengths and weaknesses are, so I guess I'll just kind of throw throw that uh, that open discussion topic to you. Like, where if you were going to pick up Safina, where would you start first? What things would you be looking at first? Well, the obvious answer, I guess, would be her frame data, which is pretty bad. <laughs> and as far as looking for advantages, if you're looking for advantages through frame data, pick a different character, because it can get very challenging. Uh, as far as punishment goes, it's not great but it's not bad. Uh, with punishment, it's all right. She's got a couple of good tools uh, if you stick with them. Uh, so, uh, okay, so you, you started, uh, it sounds like, frame data and punishing. So kind of f- fill us in on the punishing a little bit. So what, uh, you said it's it's not great, but it's not bad either. So, like, where does she get some pretty good, like, 12 framers, or where, where does it well, start to uh, get good, I guess? Her- with well, their 10-frame punishments, you've got your 1-3 option, which is a jab to a left kick. Uh, it's only in 24 points or so. Uh, it's it's consistent. It's not bad. But that's pretty much all you get to about 13 frames. Uh, and then you start to have a couple of more options. You've got your neutral left kick or your down forward 1-4, which is the first two hits of a 10-string. But what I prefer to use at the at 13 frame range, is down forward 1-2. It's, it's a natural combo, and it gives you a, a frame on hit. So to me, it's it's little things like that that you, you, can, you need to use things like that to keep the momentum going. Down forward 1-2, and you've got a quick frame to do what you need to do. At throwing another jab in there, try and get a counter hit, or use another quick move. Go for a low poke. You're pretty much safe from everything except for those uh, pesky Yoshi players who can throw out a flash. I think that's the only thing that can interrupt you. So looking at the, um, so both it looks like both one three and uh, 
down forward one two uh, give you a frame on hit, but it looks like down forward one two does some pretty beefy damage uh, based on what I'm looking at here. It gets yeah, it's, 30, it's in the thirties. So. Yeah, it's in the thirties. It's it's really not bad. Uh, you have to kind of make it a habit to use because with that additional frame, and it, it, it throws the opponent just slightly off access, and if you can keep your opponent guessing, because I don't think a lot of Zafina players use that. I, I rarely see anybody use it for punishment, and I don't know why. I think it's great. And you, Okay, so you said it was 13. Um, I'm guessing probably that most people, the most Zafina players don't use it because it's 13. I, there's not a lot of negative 13 moves out there. It's usually like the 12 frame range. Um Right, but she has she doesn't really have much in that yeah. in the twelve frame range. So. Now you mentioned the standing three, uh, and uh, looking at the frame data, it says that uh, standing three gives the plus eight. Now I presume that the the damage that you sacrifice with just doing the the, um, the standing three isn't worth the eight frames. Or the eight frames is good if you want to try something different, and because you're going to go into her scarecrow stance. And uh, for those that don't know. The scarecrow stance is the one where she's standing on one leg. It's it's probably her most common stance that you'll see in matches. Uh, yeah, I know she's got some it, funky rolls and stuff out of that too. She does. She does. You, uh, she can roll mostly from her while standing two down, uh, but that's something we can probably talk about later. Okay, sure. Well, yeah. Let's. So, uh, I guess just uh, let's uh, continue with the punishing then. I presume she has a launcher at fifteen or. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, down four or two is about 16 or 17. So, and it juggles. Uh, it has a few frames of high crush, but that's not something you want to rely on. But, uh, and you can start, you can start to get your damage from there in the 60s, I believe, for most every character. For, uh, for down four or two, um, I guess it would depend on the character, um, because I know some characters get really, really beefy damage no matter what their launcher is. Like, I know, I'm yeah, pretty sure, like, Paul can get more than 60s. She can get, uh, well, she can get her uh, up forward one, down forward one, uh, four, two, three, scarecrow uh, stance. And then you can, from there, do the both kicks to the bind. And from there, dash on in and do the old uh, down forward four, one, which is the... Uh, pretty much staple. You can uh, go for a back 4-4 four, four for a little bit more damage, but it's not going to really change anything unless they're literally on the, the cusp of death. So, so yeah, that doesn't sound uh, that doesn't sound too great, but, you know, I guess she has, she does have uh, some tools because, uh, you know, kind of like, uh, it sounds like she's kind of in a, like the Marduk situation, you know, where his, his punishing is okay. But uh, you know he he doesn't get a launcher until uh, sixteen uh, because of down forward one, and then uh, it's essentially just jabs <laughs> up until then. Uh, yeah. So is her wild standing punishing any any better than that, or is it pretty much same sort of deal? Not so much, or at least not in my opinion. Uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. Her her wild standing too is is slow. In my opinion, it's it's about 18 frames. For wall standing one, is 15, but the damage is really kind of crappy because you don't really get anything off of it. So you may as well finish the link with wall standing one, two. But when you're using that as a punish, you pretty much have to commit to the down forward 4-1 for around 40-something points. That's it. Whereas wall standing two, it's 18, but you get a full full launch and you can continue for a... Uh, a continuous juggle. So, so does she have anything yeah. in in the thirteen frame range? Because I I would assume that her while standing four uh, is just the normal eleven frames. Um, does she have anything in, in between? Or or I guess I should ask: Am I completely wrong on the while standing four? Is it uh, is it goofy in some? Oh way? no! It no, it comes out quick. Uh, it doesn't really. It doesn't give you any kind of special advantage. You don't get any kind of juggles or anything like that. In fact, I don't even think you get much in the way of three frames either, So, which is a, kind of a shame. It's, it's a knee. It's pretty cool in that regard, but the range for it isn't very great. So, And, and I take it she has nothing really at like the 13 frame range from wall standing? 
Uh, not so much. Just I think the four, but that's about it. The wall standing four. So uh, you're pretty much left with the one two. Yeah. If you want any kind of damage, unless you go into a slightly slower move that you're you're blocking or, or ducking, and you can do your wall standing two for a full juggle. Yeah, that uh, that kind of sounds like ass. <laughs> like pretty, you said it, but yeah, pretty much. Because uh, it's a talent. You like a challenge? Yeah, I guess. Well, it's definitely not a punishing tool. But uh, you mentioned uh, before we actually started about uh, on the block punishing um, that her with punishing was really good, or, or at least uh, she had some tools um, for with punishing. She does. So, uh, so I guess fill, fill us in. What uh, what sorts of tools does she have for the, the with punishing? Well, she's got her uh, one plus two, uh, both punches really uh, to four. It's a natural combo. Gives you a, a frame on hit. Decent damage. I think it's in the 40s. Not bad. Uh, if you're anywhere near a wall or you just want to go for the knockdown, she's got her 4-4-2. Four, four, Comes out fast. It, it's a high, but it's kind of short on the range. But it's beefy damage. Uh, and, of course, down forward, too, if, if you're looking for a juggle as well. Uh, things like that. If they do something really slow, you can probably try down forward and both punches, but that, that move, I don't have much luck with that move. It's a stun on normal hit. You can get some pretty beefy damage, but I don't I don't use that move much, so I don't want to swear by it. Gotcha. Alright, so any other little notes that you can think of on the on the punishing area? Uh, not so much. Uh, if uh, if you don't use down forward one two, uh, I would recommend it. Give it a shot. Uh, All right then. You can. Yeah, there's other things you can try for the whole punishing thing. Uh, she's got her two one, which I think most people know because she's got a low kick mix up, and I don't rarely use it because most people know about it. But it usually makes people freeze because they're expecting that low kick to come out. So you can kind of, as a punishing tool, use that in. Possibly uh, go for some mind games and thinking if the opponent's thinking you're going to do the mix up and if they duck, uh, the uh, go from there. The low kick is it? Uh, is it pretty pretty fast? Does it come out uh, like pretty instantly? Or no, it it isn't very fast. Uh, but if your opponent's on the ball, they won't have any problem looking at it and ducking. But you can still use that to your advantage. Uh, keep them guessing. Is my is my Probably biggest piece of advice with Zafina: don't be predictable. Keep them guessing. Well, that's a uh, uh, that's actually I'm glad you said that because uh, that's why I was uh, uh, asking about the low kick because uh, I mean if your opponent is expecting it or trying to block it, um, presuming that it's not something that you can just sit there and um, and watch for it to come out. If you do the two one and then they try to duck or low parry or something like that. Uh, you know, I mean, right. they're giving up frames in order to do that. So if you stop and at 2-1, then yep. you're essentially, it's even even if it doesn't hit, you're still giving yourself advantage in a sense. So, that's, that's right. Uh, I don't think most opponents are going to try and interrupt that. So they'll probably wait to see if the animation comes out. And if they're if you just do the 2-1 and they're just standing there, give them a low, give them a low poke. Give them what they're waiting for. Nice. Okay, so we went over the punishing a little bit. Um, so let me ask this question. What uh, it sounds like, based on what you just said, you know, uh, stay unpredictable with her. So what, what's her bi- biggest strength? I'm guessing it has something to do with like the stance switching and all that. But uh, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's some other area. Because um, I, I was like, my first thought is maybe like a a ling sort of strategy where you're just uh, uh, you don't want them to touch you. You know, you're just kind of bouncing all over the place. But, uh, if if only some of Zafina's uh, moves were as fast as Ling's, uh, definitely. And, and, and I'm I'm thinking some people probably thought she might be like Ling or Lei with a lot of her stances at first, but a lot of her transitions are are not very safe. Uh, they can be interrupted, or even once you get into your stance, they can start to be sidestepped um, or sidewalked. So Zafina's tracking can be a bit of a problem. So you have to kind of use that. To your advantage. So, like, like when I said earlier, you, you get the the neutral left kick. You get your you get your plus frames. 
part of that goes into your stance transition, but it's they, as far as I know, they can interrupt you once you start doing something like a scarecrow one, which is it's just a little jab, it's a little poke, uh, things like that. But it can be sidesteps, so you have to be careful. She does have tracking from her scarecrow, but uh, her down four three, for example, it's a sweep. Uh, it'll it'll track to some degree, mostly to the right. You get a free juggle on if they hit, but if if they're if they're on the ball, they can see it. So you have to be kind of predictable. Or not you want to be unpredictable with that. But the nice thing about the scarecrow stance is you can also sidestep yourself. That's kind of cool. I always found that to be very interesting that you can actually move three dimensional on one leg. Yet to her other two stances, you cannot really sidestep very easily. Uh, her mantis, you can sidestep a little, but you really why? <laughs> Most people will hit you with those quick mids, uh, like a down forward and right kick or something with most characters will probably hit Zafina out of her mantis. So you want to be, you really want to be unpredictable. Uh, use your frames accordingly, like with your left kick. You get your plus frames. Uh, don't just abuse the same two moves, you know, your scarecrow bolt punches or something, because I know everybody loves that move and you get plus six frames, uh, which is good, but your your opponents will adapt if you just keep throwing out the same moves. You want to you want to be unpredictable. So, my, so when you're uh, when you're playing with Zafina, then are is your goal to be um, like a nuisance and try to force them into the big mistake, or is your goal just to kind of keep keep just poking and, and try to get just little tick damage up and up until or I guess just tick them to death basically, or because you mentioned the sweep. Um, which sounded like uh, you get some pretty beefy damage off of that. Um, yeah, are you just you trying can... to kind of goad them into that, or is it just poke, 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 poke? You're dead. You wanna you wanna poke a lot. Uh, you wanna keep your momentum going. You wanna probably put yourself in a position where whatever, if you can get yourself a mix up without leading you to instant death, uh, definitely do that. Uh, I've seen a lot of Zafina players put a lot of emphasis on the poke, um, a lot of jabs, a lot of down forward ones, uh, ducking jabs, and so on. Uh, but if you can, if you can lure your opponent into doing something uh, like trying to punish you with uh, an unsafe move as you go into a stance, because you can you can cancel her stances and block instantly. Uh, you go into your your left kick as you as they do a move and you punish it with the left kick you go into your scarecrow and then you tap down back and then back and they do a barge attack thinking you're going to do a move there you go you get yourself a free down forward two or a hop kick something like that you you, you go them into a mistake and then maybe the next time you do your your neutral left kick to go into your scarecrow out comes your sweep you know they're hoping to learn from that mistake and not going to do a barge attack or something that is pretty unsafe. See what I'm saying? Be unpredictable, but you're also, I, I don't want to say training your opponent, but you want to get into his head. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because that was actually going to be my next question because uh, I, until you just said it, I actually did not know that uh, she could instantly block out of her stances. I, I presume that's all of her stances, or is it just scary? Scarecrow's the easiest. You can also block from the Mantis by tapping down back, and then you can block low or, or back, but it depends on what move you're using to get into the stance. Uh, you can do a manual stance transition uh, down in both kicks, for example, to go into the Mantis, uh, and then you can tap down back. Uh, but there are a few, unfortunately, that leave a little something to be desired. Uh, like, uh, I think her forward two, three, if you go into the scarecrow and then decide you want to block, I still think you're at a, a little bit of a disadvantage. Uh, if you do a wall standing two to down, I know characters like Fang and, and whatnot can kind of dash in a little bit and do a shoulder and hit you. So it's not something you want to pay attention to what you're, you're goading your opponent into, you know, you're... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like uh, the transition uh, to the stance is very important uh, in determining whether you can block or not. If you just uh, 
go into the stance from neutral, can you block instantly, or is there some, um, is, are there some like uh, some frames in there where you, you have to wait? It's almost instant. If you tap your, for example, if you tap your down and both kicks with Zafina and go into her mantis and tap down back, you'll block. She, you'll, you'll see the animation, too, uh, if you're familiar with her to some extent. She goes down and crouches down and holds her hands up, and then she kind of sways back just a little bit, and she starts to crouch. And I, I believe you're vulnerable for a few frames. Uh, I don't know the exact number. I've never actually studied that uh, in depth. But we blocked some relatively fast moves. Uh, so for all, so for all intents and purposes, it's a... For all intents and purposes, it's, it, it should be, for the most part, uh, a useful tactic. Uh, I don't know if I would abuse it, to say, but... Yeah, I know there's... Um, I'm trying to think uh, offhand, like, a, a stance that you can... I guess I don't know enough about Lay. I was going to throw him out there as an example, but I don't know if his uh, stance cancels are... Instance, but, uh, I guess we'll, we'll find out when we get to lay. But uh, okay, so let's. Uh, um, I guess talk talk about uh, more of these. Uh, uh, more about these stances. So you mentioned uh, scarecrow. Um, I guess just as a general question, is your goal to be in her stances most of the time, or I know you mentioned like a lot of subpoena players like to uh, do the poking and stuff like that. Are you? poking until you get advantage and then go into stances, or are you just kind of bouncing around in stances? Uh, if, if I uh, get into a stance, for the most part, I only want to be in the stance long enough to get some sort of an advantage. Uh, so so you're not randomly I, doing stances? No, no, no. no. I, don't, I don't want to be in a stance longer than I have to because I'm vulnerable. Unless I cancel the stance and decide to block, hoping my opponent attacks me with an unsafe move, and then I can repeat the process. Uh, I only want to be in that stance long enough to get to some sort of an advantage. So if I'm in the scarecrow and I do, I do a neutral left kick and go into scarecrow and, and I throw out a neutral one, which is like a jab, and I notice that I hit him, I may do her down in left kick, just, just a quick poke, and then go back into a block just to see what they do. I might try the sweep. I might sidestep. I might try her down forward. Uh, and th yeah, the sweep, down forward and three. Down forward and four, I don't use very much. I've had some bad luck with that. In fact, one time I even had an opponent jump over me and get behind me. <laughs> got, got, I must have gotten predictable because, yeah, that was painful. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, we're, we're always looking for, uh, for jump over <laughs> tactics. And yeah, so, yeah, so, <laughs> going, yeah, so yes. If you're looking to jump over somebody, if you notice, if you think they're going to do a down forward for Zafina, jump over them. Very nice. Characters like Fang and others with back, I'm sure Lei and Ling, oh, I'm sure that they will kill you. All right. Uh, okay, so um, so that that was Scarecrow uh, stance, you said. So it, so it sounds like, okay, so from what you said, you want to be neutral until you get a little bit of an advantage, and then you use the uh, the stances as an offensive tool. So, what? Which? Uh, I don't want to like ask the like lamest question ever, but I guess which uh, which stance is the best, and like I guess which stances would you use in in, in what situations? That sounds like a that, really lame question, but like I really, really no, don't no, know no. how I, else I, to put it. Okay, I, I think I know what you're getting. I think you more or less are, are basically saying what, in my opinion, uh, the best stance is, but which one I use the most. So let me answer it this way. The stance I can honestly say I try to use the least is the tarantula stance. And that's the one where she's very, very low to the ground. Uh, she's, well, she's kind of like a little, crawling like a little spider, I guess, on all fours, but she's really low to the ground. But the moves in it, are just not very good in my opinion. She's got her, her down and left punch, which is a low, and you can transition to her mantis, which is good in that regard. Keep your opponents guessing. But the range isn't very good. Um, she's got a launcher from it, which is not bad, but it's really slow. Um, I rarely use her tarantula moves, to be honest, because I just don't like the stance. I, I really feel vulnerable um, to lows and low-hitting mids, so very bad. So that's 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 the stance I 
I prefer not to use very often. Occasionally, I use it at the wall. You can do her her, uh, her jab to four. She does a little flip kick and goes into her mantis. And it actually causes a wall stun if, like, if your opponent is crouching or if they're on the ground. You can, you can kind of lure them, I guess, if you're lucky, do a jab to a right kick. If they get up and do a move and you get a counter hit, you get a wall stun, hit both punches, get a bind. Free combo, but for the most part, I uh, I don't see much use in a tarantula. It doesn't it doesn't evade. It doesn't move. It doesn't have much in the way of tricks. I was so, actually uh, just going to ask, um, just out of curiosity, if she had something like a uh, like a, a phoenix down that uh, Ling has, where you just hit down and essentially that. I mean, I've seen that move like practically go under lows sometimes. Refresh my memory. Which one uh, was that? that Art of uh, Artifine, when she gets, uh, Ling gets down in the stance, and then you just press down. She does like a... Um, oh, and she ducks yeah, a little bit? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, not so much. Which would be kind of cool, actually. Uh, that would be a great uh, That would be a great addition. You should submit that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not a huge Zafina <laughs> fan, so I don't know if I'll be z- submitting anything, but uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, if you guys start a petition, I'll sign it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that would be that would be kind of interesting to see what they would do with that. Uh, I don't know about from tarantula; she's already low from the ground, but uh, but uh, it doesn't yeah. sound like uh, it helps all that much based on what you're saying. No, not so much. Uh, her mantis stance is fun. You can you can really play some mind games with your opponent. Um, if I get into my mantis stance. That's probably the stance I get in the second most. Uh, she's got some 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 moves in it that are mid mids and lows, lots of mix ups. So you want to keep them guessing. She has some counter hit moves from there, like her right punch, that will give you a stun. Uh, you can't get much in the way of a beefy combo from it per se, but there are some tricks you can get with it, um, catches and so on. So she's got her useless moves, unfortunately, from her mantis, but. This isn't it's what for me, this is just something I like to do just once in a while to get in my opponent's head, but uh just every once in a while. Call it my just wanting to be a dick playing Tekken style, but every once in a while I'll get into a mantis and doing whatever and I'll and I'll tap uh down forward three four and it's not a bolt button press, it's a one right after the other press. Down forward, left kick and then right kick immediately, and she'll do a, a little kick but she'll turn her back. So her back is now to you, but she's still in the mantis stance. And then I'll just tap down and right kick and slide away. And, you know, people think, you know, you're running away kind of thing. And you do that once or twice, and uh, the opponents almost always come after you, and then you can switch it again, tap down forward and 3-4, and she'll do that same kick back turn and turn around. And it actually has a – it can actually hit from bo- – from the front and behind, so if your opponent gets too close, or even, uh, I believe I've hit somebody sliding at me once from the run, etc., etc., it, it's just kind of fun. Uh, it's not a high-level strategy, so don't write it down if you're looking to do it in a tournament, but if you're just looking to be a dick with Zafina and make people go, what the hell are you doing? Give it a shot. It's so much fun. Nice. Okay. Well, I guess that uh, that kind of answers the question for us. Then Scarecrow is obviously the go-to move. Um, so, which does have its own set of problems, I'm afraid. But if it has the best damage overall, and it can, it, it has some tracking moves. So you can be you can be sidewalked though. So be careful. Um, you can be jumped over. So be careful. Uh, you can be interrupted. So be careful. So you have to kind of. Get an idea of what you're doing. So, all right then. Uh, okay, so so it sounds like you're um, uh, you and, and probably most uh, Zafina players are are the neutral first kind of players, and then you you do some sort of transition into other uh, uh, other stances. Yeah. yeah, once you hit yeah. something. Um, so I guess uh, so. Your whole game plan then, uh, you know, relies on this premise that you're you're doing pokes. You're you're starting your stuff from neutral. So what um, – it doesn't sound like uh, that she's all that safe. So are you pretty much in defense mode most of the time and just kind of looking for an opening? Or is or does she have, like, any yeah. real tools to – Yeah. No, if you're, if you're playing a, an aggressive opponent or somebody who has 
a lot of safe moves at their disposal. You probably will be on the defensive a lot. Uh, you need to find ways to get your momentum going. Uh, uh, jabs and things like of that nature to interrupt if you can help it. Uh, if, if they're starting to get predictable, uh, go into her fully crotch and do her down, forward, and three sweep. Because you can get all kinds of juicy traps from that. Uh, if, if they're doing predictable stuff like they're double jabbing and then trying to do a, a magic four looking for a counter hit launch you know you can try it and get her down back and right right punch on counter hit that knocks down you can get some free damage off that or you can try and go for a trap etc uh, etc et anything like that to try and keep your momentum going which I gotta say can be a little challenging with her uh, so I, that actually leads me to uh, another question um, does she have any good like uh counter uh, we, uh, we typically we uh whenever i refer to them i say like panic buttons or anything but uh not just panic buttons but uh maybe like evasive stuff or i don't think she has any counters right but um what, you mean like a reversal yeah like a reversal or anything like or even a parry or anything like that. no no parries no reversals um so does she have um, any like it's it, i'm pretty sure she doesn't have a magic four but does she have anything like that or maybe like some evasive stuff like just the only, the only thing that I guess would even come close to a panic button or a magic four looking, not really looking, but just useful move like that would be a down back two. But you need a you need a counter hit, and the problem with that move is it it's really difficult to utilize properly because you need not only do you need the counter hit, but it seems to only really work effectively if you're interrupting the first move uh, or the first move of a link or a string. If they just throw out one move and then they're starting to recover and then you do it, you just hit them, which gives you a, a frame or two on hit, which is okay. Nothing wrong with that. But it's the counter hit you really want. So you can then hit them on the ground or you can run up and try and catch them back turned or uh, a forward one on Marduk, for example, if you side roll will float, things like that. Uh, her panic buttons aren't all that fantastic. You, you usually just have to poke in some form or fashion to try and get to an advantage to stop them. So I would presume if, uh, like, a matchup like a Steve or something who's just always going to be in your face, that's probably a pretty rough matchup for her. She doesn't really have a whole lot of tools to get him off her. Yeah, I guess Steve, down back in two, will probably be your friend if he's transitioning, just like you will try and eventually transition. Uh, down back in two will probably be one of your best friends. Uh, your jabs, your down forward one two, it's safe. I'm telling you, Zafina players, you want to use it. <laughs> On hit, it's safe. So well, we can uh, actually. Uh, I was going to ask as well earlier, um, and before I f forget, I might as well ask now because you, you mentioned the down forward one two, um, and then uh, I know you know jabs obviously, uh, and I we mentioned uh, like at the start of the podcast the the low. I think it's down two. Um, does she have? Like what? What's her? No, no, no. Down, down and two is not a low. It's actually a mid. mid. What's the? Like, uh, or maybe I'm getting my moves mixed up. But I thought there's this like really, really long range low that she has. Back and back and bolt punches. Maybe that's it. It's, it's just that a little she, poke, a low. Yeah, she, she kneels down real low and she kneels down real low and sticks out both hands and she kind of kneecaps you or yep. shins you with her. Yep, that's exactly oh. what it is. Because I know that move is really good. Um, it, it, well, I don't want, don't say really good. It, it's <laughs> a good, good. <laughs> Yeah, it's, well, here's the thing. It gives you negative seven frames on hit. So you really want to be careful with that. Um, it is a good poking tool, especially at any kind of range. But your opponent's left crouching, which, nothing wrong with that. But if you do a move and they do a move at the same time, you're going to get beat. So you, you, kind of, you really want to be careful. Um, in my experience, when I throw out back and both punches, uh, I almost always kind of wait and see what they do. If they immediately stand back up and do nothing, I'll throw another back and both punches at you. Yeah, I, see. I guess I ne didn't realize it was a uh, negative seven. I was always looking at the, just the ridiculous range, and she gets super low. It, it does. It does have good range. I will give it that. the The damage is not is not meat is not meaty. It's not beefy. Um, but it's not it's not horrible either. So well, I'm looking really, looking at the frame data. Negative twenty two on block. That's crazy. Yeah, for such a low damage move, uh, it doesn't get blocked very much. But 
It does occasionally happen if you're predictable. Well, okay, so in addition to those, the back 12 and then, um, uh, you know, jabs down forward one, two, uh, and I presume she has some other loads. Like, what, what other uh, tools does she have for poking? Depending on uh, what kind of poking you want to do, you, you've got your low poke, your down and uh, left kick, which goes into Scarecrow, but I never really had much use for that move because you don't really get much in the way of frames. So, I know, it, it, it sucks, huh? You know, I'm trying to say good things about the character, but, you know, come on, work with me here, Nanko. You only gave me so much. <laughs> no, that's okay. We had, uh, uh, during the pos uh, Kazuya podcast, you know, they kind of shit all over that character. So, <laughs> uh, but... Uh, well, no character's perfect. No character's perfect. No. And I'm, I'm completely okay with that. And, and even in uphill battle, I like a challenge, but on a, on a, on a com completely competitive level... Uh, not very good. <laughs> it, it's very it's very challenging. If you no, if you can if you can make it work with Zafina, especially on, on high level play, uh, you know more power to you. Um, you the man. Nice. Okay, so we have to town three. Then is is that it? Is that the end of the list? <laughs> uh, not so much. Uh, as far as poking goes. Uh, I'm probably going to get a little bit of shit for this one, but every once in a while, I like to throw in her instant wall standing moves um, into her standing game. Uh, and the way I do it is uh, just tap down, down, forward, neutral. Um, takes a little bit of practice. Uh, and from there, you can throw out her wall standing moves. Uh, and for those of you that are automatically covering up your ears right now, going, well, they're unsafe, that's not entirely true. Her wall standing for is almost unsafe. It's like negative nine on block or something like that. But it's fast, and if you can do it fast enough, your opponent's going to go, well, okay, wait a second now. But even better is her wall standing three, which doesn't give you any kind of a any kind of an advantage. It's like negative eight, I think, on, on hit, but it's a knockdown. It's beefy damage. But the, the, the real value is, this, is the reach and the surprise value because no one's going to see that coming. No one knows the animation. No one's going to see it coming. You're just standing there, and all of a sudden, wall standing three. Bam! And if they try and punish you with some, some barge-style some barge attack or something, you're probably going to be ready for it because you're going to be blocking at negative eight, and you can punish accordingly, get yourself a juggle, give it a shot. I, like, I throw it occasionally in my poking game. It doesn't sound like it, but give it a shot. Tell me what you think. Okay, so I have to, to ask this just because uh, I've never heard it before. But what? Barge attack? Where did you get that from? <laughs> um, that's, what I've been, that's what I've been hearing people call, uh, like, Ling's forward and both punches, uh, fangs back and both punches, shoulder attacks that you use for quick punishing that are knockdowns. Okay. I mean, I figured out what it meant. I was just like, I've never heard that before. Where is this? That's I didn't, no I <laughs> I, I didn't want to keep saying, oh, if Ling does this or Fang does that, because then it sounds character specific. There's a lot of shoulder, quick shoulder punishing attacks, knockdowns, and so on in Tekken 6, uh, something that I think drove a lot of people to distraction. Uh, and, you know, it is what it is, so. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so um, so I guess uh, and, any other uh, notes that you can think of on, like, uh, little pokes that people should be using or should be uh, uh, not for? Not so much. Uh, you just, yeah, just just look for that opening. Pressure your opponent. Uh, use whatever you can. So, she's got some other pokes, but I, I personally don't use them. Uh, I don't swear by them either. And I, you know, yeah, I don't want to start saying, well, there's this and this and this, but I personally don't like them and use them. So I don't, I don't know how that how that would work. Yeah, she has other stuff, but in your opinion. Yeah, the, I, I, it just, it just hasn't found a place in my game. I don't like it. Her down and left punch, for example, it's a little downward striking backhand looking thing. I just, I don't really use that move much. It doesn't seem to hit grounded. Or it doesn't seem to float very easily, et cetera, et cetera. I just don't use the move hardly at all as an example. And it comes out relatively fast, but you could probably poke with it to some extent, but not me. So yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to go into using it in poking when I myself don't. No, fair enough, and that's a, um, you know, that's a valid point because you know we're not a, a move by move breakdown sort of podcast, so <laughs> so we, we just got to yeah. give everybody the meat and potatoes. Uh, speaking of, um, 
one thing before I forget. Okay, so I want to talk about damage because we talked about uh, you know like you, you talked to um, mentioned some like uh, beefy uh, juggle starters and whatnot. Um, overall, is her her damage pretty decent? I know you mentioned she gets sixties uh, off downpour too, which I would say is probably average. Um, yeah, off- high sixties, almost I think almost the seventies uh, if I recall correctly from downpour too. Um, hop kick I think is a little bit less. Uh, I was going to so ask take, real quick, hop kick, so hop, her hop kick is slower than, it's not 15 frames, it's worse than 16, 16 or 7, I, I think so, yeah, I don't, I don't use her hop kick much either, uh, and I know a lot of people want to say that Tekken 6 is a bit of a hop kick fest, uh, <laughs> that's, that's true, <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know, but yeah, her hop kick's useful, don't get me wrong, but, uh, and hers, and hers just, isn't 4, right, it's a 3, no, no, no! It's a four. It it's a four. Her up forward, her up forward three is a. It's a jumping. I don't want to lunging. Oh yeah. Big okay. Left kick. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've seen that. Okay. And that's that's also a move I never really found. Uh, I've never really incorporated into my game, so I can't really say much about it. I presume it it, uh, it low crushes. So I suppose that's something. Yeah, but it's slow, so. If you're looking for a low crush, there's there's better. Back in left punch, for example, if you think if you're looking for a low crush, or even a high crush, but that's an unsafe move as well. So, um, actually, now that you bring it up, the up forward three or the up three, um, that doesn't. Uh, I, I know that knocks down. It doesn't uh, leave like a um, the opponent in like a funky position for like some possible okey stuff. If they don't tech roll, sure. Oh, you can tech roll off of it. I, I believe so. I believe you can tap back or that quick roll. Oh, does it just have a, uh, I guess I'm okay. I'm gonna have to look. I'm I'm looking up a video of it right now because I I gotta like picture it in my mind because uh because like what I guess I for whatever reason I thought that it knocked down like actual knock like down. slam down. You know, where you uh, it. I was under the impression you could. I was pretty sure you could tech roll from it. Uh, that that really fast tech roll that they that they stuck back. Remember in uh, DR that that quick tech roll. Uh, Animation from certain knockdowns. Gotcha. I believe I believe that's one of them. Like I don't use the move very much, so. And All right, that's then. fair enough. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we're getting kind of on a tangent, and whatnot. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, back to the damage then. So you said uh, um, almost seventy off of down four two, and then uh, off of hop kick. Uh, you said like a little bit less than that. Yeah, a little bit less than that. And then uh, what's what other beefy? Uh, Juggle starters does she have, if any? Well, uh, from a from a non stance point of uh, point of view, uh, she's got her back and right punch, which tracks, uh, but it's a high, it's a little slow. But she, on counter hit, you get kind of this. They they start to kind of slow fall, uh, and you have pretty much have all the time in the world to do whatever you want, and you can get around. Oh, off the top of my head, 75 points. Um, I almost got 80, I believe, off of that. But that's really advanced stuff for her anyway. I'm guessing it's probably like, um, I don't want to say it's strictly um, situation dependent, but I'm I'm guessing like the high 80s and stuff, you have to get that that right situation or close to. Or is it just a hard juggle? You have to get a counter hit to uh, to utilize some of her better starters. Uh, back in left punch, for example, uh, I really I really like that move. If and I would love it more if it was it wasn't so unsafe. Um, but it, it's got great range. It goes under highs. It crushes lows. On counter hit, I get a free juggle somewhere in the neighborhood of the 70s. Uh, and, and even on the little characters, you still have time to do a forward, forward, three for a bind, which is one of her, her better binds because it's a little bit more damage than her bolt punches bind. Uh, but that but, is, uh, uh, and then... It's I, really unsafe. Yeah, I, I, I was just about to say, but I presume it's really unsafe. It's really unsafe. Uh, I, I believe on normal hit, I get I get a couple of frames, which is cool too, but once again, the risk for the reward isn't always great because I believe... I believe it's more than jab punishable. 
So for the back one, uh, well, according to the frame yeah. data, it says negative fifteen, which is launch range. Oh yeah, which, there you go, launch punishable. <laughs> That's so that back and right punch counter hit. You need it for the for the juggle damage, uh, but you need a counter hit. It's a good tracking move, um, but by the time you probably figure out that they're trying to sidestep you and do it, they've probably already done a move because it's it's a little slow, uh, in my opinion. So when you start to go into her scarecrow stance, for example, she's got a right kick, which is a uh, a juggle starter, and it leaps her in the scarecrow, and you've got all kinds of wonderful combo potential right there, most of which will land you anywhere from the high 60s to the middle 70s. Uh, her down forward and three, the sweep from the scarecrow, you can do your wall standing four to a down forward one, and then insert your combo, uh, which I believe... I haven't done that in a while, but I believe it's in the uh, high 70s, possibly to the low 80s. Not bad. So her her overall best damage is her unblockable, which isn't all that exciting, unfortunately. And her down back and four to right punch, but you need a counter hit. And you can get half-life without even breaking a sweat with that. As I know I've seen that uh, on occasion, uh, at least in, in combo videos, for sure. Um yeah, you need the you need the counter hit. Um, you've probably seen the low kick used for poking. They you tap down back and right kick, and you can go into her mantis stance or just do the low kick, uh, which isn't bad. But if it, if you're if you're counter hit fishing, you can you can do the right punch as well. But if you don't get a counter hit, then uh, they can block it and they can do some gnarly things to you. So you want to be careful with that. Well, based on what I'm looking at for the uh, the frame data, um, I guess down back four. If you don't go into Mantis, um, it's negative thirteen. But I guess down okay, both down back four and down back four two are both negative thirteen. Uh, but it says down back four down, which would be the Mantis, um, is negative twenty one. It's really bad. But it's, I know, isn't it depressing? Yeah, that's a, that's a lot. Of, I'm not seeing a lot of positive numbers out here. <laughs> At least yeah, not in the yeah, black I, yeah, I, I didn't mention that move in, in my poking because uh, I don't. I, I only use it occasionally, and it's just not a good poking tool. So, but it, if someone, if you're, if you've got the momentum going, you think you're you're baiting them into a mistake, or if they're being predictable with some highs. Uh, maybe they like to backdash and then throw in a magic four, for example. Not just just saying. Uh, if you can counter hit with that, you got you, you've got half their life bar, just like that. So since we're talking about juggles and damage and all that, um, a really important you know part of this game is the wall and the wall carry. Uh, I, it sounds like her wall game. Is up like her wall damage is pretty decent. Is just I mean, does she have some? I don't know, maybe some stuff that I don't know about. But uh, like, does what does she have in the in the form of like a wall carry? Is she because like based on what I've seen from like uh, juggles and you know vids and whatnot, like her juggles are so goofy with the stance stuff that it doesn't look like there's a, a lot of wall carry there. But I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's some stuff that uh, that I just was missing. Or how? Uh, you want to? You wanna, well, if you're playing a wall stage, you want to adjust your juggles accordingly. Uh, um, maybe maybe a, a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually do one of her staple juggles, for example, and you've probably seen it a hundred times uh, when they, whatever bound, bound, boundary you do, the down forward 4-1, which is that kick to that big slap uh, at a certain range will actually cause a wall stun. They actually slide on the floor and hit the wall, and if, if you have, know that's going to happen, you can run up and get a little bit of damage and then continue your momentum uh, off the wall. Uh, otherwise, yeah, you, you have to adjust your juggles. Uh, you might have to sacrifice some damage instead of doing her forward and right punch uh, three scarecrow transitions for your combo bodies and so on. Uh, resort to dashing jabs, uh, down forward ones, things like that. Okay, so let's so. say that um, that you actually do get uh, that that wall splat. Um, what what sorts of things are you doing at the wall? Like, is it is it any good from the from the down forward? Uh, well, from from whatever. I mean, uh, 
I guess there's there's two different situations uh, for the most part that you're going to run into with the wall. One where you get the uh, the wall splat from a juggle, and then uh, one where you just uh, you know power move into the into the wall to cause the wall splat. Um, but I guess from either one, I mean, does she have any like decent oaky traps off it maybe, or is just the damage? Uh, I mean, the damage itself is it is it any good or how would you? The damage is the damage is uh, for the most part just fine. Uh, most people will sacrifice a little bit of guaranteed damage uh, if they're at the wall. For example, if uh, they do a move and you, you knock them up in the air and you, you just only have time to, you know, let's say do a, an up forward one to a dashing jab to a to a jab to a three, because the wall is right there, you see it, you know it, you know. So they're right there, you forward, forward, three on the bind, tap back to cancel the scarecrow, and then forward, two, three, go into your scarecrow, and then from there... You can chance tapping forward and three uh, for the 70% damage, and it leaves you in the scarecrow. In which case, when they just lie there or tech roll, you can then hit both punches, and you get your your scarecrow both punches hit. And on hit, it will knock down. On block, it gives you your frames, and then you can keep up your your wall game momentum. That's what most people do. Nothing wrong with it. I do it myself. Uh, but you can try. You can. You know, Try other things. You don't want to be predictable. Uh, you can, if you think they're high enough, you can run up and do your two, one, three. Now you're in the mantis, and they're at the wall on the ground, not in the good spot. I might add. Uh, just be careful with what move you follow up with, because a lot of the mantis moves can be a little unsafe. Uh, things like that. Try and splat them. You can even run up and just do bolt punches to floor twice if you get the bind on the wall. Hit them, it recovers fast enough, all hits will connect, and then see what they do. If they, if they tech roll, plan accordingly. If they just lie there, they're, they're leaving them, themselves open for a back and both punches on the ground, etc., etc. Gotcha. So I, I would say her overall wall game uh, is probably average. Uh, just, just due to the fact that she's, that it's she's, she's a little unsafe. <laughs> What? As I say, just due to the fact that it's the wall, and walls yeah. are dumb. <laughs> but it's... some of her, some of her uh, better moves, though, it's it's not easy to get that wall splat. She doesn't have a lot of good wall splat moves. And, uh, well, four 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 is good. Four four two is good, but it's a high uh, to continue wall splatting to keep that that damage going um, if you can but just like any other character in Tekken 6 you can just do gobs of damage if you can get them to the wall and then re, re wall splat them again well um, okay so that uh, um, that sounds like a pretty good uh, description of the wall game and, but before I forget uh, just because we're kind of talking about uh, Oki and whatnot, you know the wall presents its own special problems uh, if you're getting beat down but uh in in general, I mean, does she have any like really good Oki traps or like? Because uh, it sounds like she might not have uh, like really good pickups or anything. I mean, does she have anything goofy, tricky like that? Um, do you mean like at the wall or just? In I, general, I would just say or? in general. Um, cause, like, she does she have does. any like, knockdown stuff some, that sets up for maybe a, a relaunch? She does have some traps. Uh, she, for example, her her fully crouched down forward three. Um, she's she's fully crouched and she does this sweep on hit or normal hit uh, and they fall uh, feet towards face down I believe uh, you can run up and depending on what they do you can do some pretty nasty things I've gotten people with forward forward three and one for example um, I've uh, gotten down and down and two I believe is guaranteed but uh, I've, I've dashed up and gotten Back in three, which is her big stomp, kind of like Fangs forward, forward three, I guess, would be close, because they just decided to lie there, wondering what I was going to do. Um, I've gotten both punches to a four, four on a back-turned opponent, which can give you a small juggle, or if you're Marduk, a, a full combo um, for ridiculous damage. We're talking serious damage then. Uh, things like that. She has some other things. Uh her mantis right punch, for example, it hits them. They fall, a, kind of an off axis to you, and you can, you can actually remember how I said you could kind of sidestep a little bit in, in the mantis. You could do that, 
and and then proceed to do a, a mantis attack. And if you time it right, you can catch them back turned. Uh, the the two on three, for example, if you, if you manage to land the low kick and uh, you're in the mantis stance, and if your opponent does almost anything, you can if your timing's right, you can tap down and left kick right punch. Excuse me left kick, left punch, and it will float them, and then you can continue to combo them with some other stuff, Mantis 1, both punches and bind, and so on and so forth. She, she does have trap potential, uh, but what's, um, when it's a... What's the, the move? It's, uh, uh, I don't, it's like a, similar to uh, Can Can Kicks, where it's like a, a little low poke um, to a high that launches. Um, if you're just in neutral, it, it only launches on, on counter hit, but I would presume it launches... Uh, down and right kick. You talking about down and right kick to left kick? Yeah, maybe that's it. But does that? Where she does like this little hop kick. Yeah. Where she does like a little hop and she kicks you in the shin yeah. and then she pops up on her other leg and. Yeah, because I, I presume yeah. that gives a normal launch, uh, or I shouldn't say normal, but it would launch it, on uh, on back. It launches, on, yeah, it launches on counter hit. Um, I don't, I don't use the move much myself, unfortunately. It, the, the range isn't very good. You can get damage on it. Uh, uh, in the 70s to low 80s, if I recall correctly. Uh, but if you just do the low kick and you get a counter hit, they get kind of like that false stun where not, they can pretty much block anything you do, um, but you, you have a free attempt to continue your your momentum uh, and pressure. But uh, on counter hit, yeah, it launches. Uh, I think I think they... I, I, it doesn't jail, if I recall correctly, so they they can duck it except on counter hit, and I believe they can even duck it um, if you catch them back turned. I might be mistaken there, but uh, I believe they can even duck it if you let. So if you do your fully crouched down four three and you run up and you, you know everything's timed right, you tap down in four and three. I believe if they're fast enough, they can even duck out of that that second kick for the launch, which is which is unfortunate if that's the case. Yeah, that'd be something, uh, something to test. I mean, you've already, uh, you know, uh, given us some other options, so you don't necessarily need to do the down four yeah. or down four three. But uh, that'd be, uh, be interesting to test to figure out if that would work. Anyway, yeah. so I think I, uh, I cut you off before. I <laughs> oh, that's okay. Never mind. You're the host. Uh, the host with the most. Oh man, more extends references. God, we need to get back to. Them. Anyway, so uh, uh, I don't know. Do you remember what your thought was before I cut you off? Uh, we were talking about traps, right? Yes. Oh yeah, that's right. I remember. Uh, um, regular just on access. I, I think she's limited. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, she can float Marduk, for example, uh, if they're side rolling or back rolling with an up forward one and, uh, and things of that nature, but. Uh, when it's just straight on access, uh, n- not so much in the way of traps or floats, down forward one, uh, forward two, three. Um, but most most opponents will, will figure that out pretty quick and won't make that mistake very much. So it's not something I rely on. So, um, Kind of in the, uh, the whole um, scheme and topic of uh, Oki, uh, I do want to ask about her grabs. Um, I'll be honest, I actually am not too familiar with the grabs. I couldn't even really tell you what they look like. Um, but does she... I presume she probably doesn't have a, a good grab game, but uh, at least not many grabs. Uh, you know, like, uh, obviously. No, she's got, a, she's, got her, she's got her two basic throws, one of which goes into a uh, Mantis stance, and then another one that's, you know, just her normal command throw... Uh, and then she's got her command throw, which is uh, forward, forward, both punches. Uh, obviously, a both punches break. Uh, but the nice thing about that one is you can actually get traps from that, especially if the opponent doesn't know Zafina very well. Um, if they're familiar with the, the system overall, they'll probably see that they're going to be in an, be in an off-access uh, Oki predicament, or they won't make that mistake very often. But the potential is there. So her, uh, I think even her side and back throw also can lead to further traps, uh, bolt punches to right kick, right kick, as an example, if they uh, if they uh, try to instant stand uh, and time it right, or if they quick roll, you can catch them with a float and so on. Uh, her throw game, though, overall really is nothing special uh, and is like other characters. She's only got the two commands. 
two basic throws and the four four bull punches uh, command throw, which is a little unfortunate because uh, I was hoping that she might get a throw option in Tekken Tag 2 from uh, at least one of her stances, but as far as I know, that hasn't happened. <laughs> well, leave it to Namco to make a character and then ignore it. But, uh, so, off of the regular grabs, does she have anything good, like any good Oki or anything like that? No, just your, just your, uh, typical Pope style stuff, or you can just wait and see what they do, hope, hope to catch them, uh, keep your momentum going as they stand kind of thing, uh, yeah. Okay, well, um, one thing, uh, uh another topic, I guess, that, uh, that I've been meaning to ask, uh, because we've been talking about it a few, uh, uh, kind of tangentially, uh, we've been mentioning it, uh, you know, her tracking and her, just her general safety, uh, you know, we mentioned, uh, when we were talking about it, it sounds you know like she's mostly a defensive character rather than offense. Uh, her defense starts her offense uh, sort of thing. But uh, overall, like you know, it sounds like she has some tracking moves. But is her tracking like all that good, or is it just you, no. you have to take a risk? No, in order to no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. no. Her tracking isn't very good. I, I hate to say it. Uh, uh, I know, I think some people think 442 and 444 decent tracking moves, and I think they track a little bit, but I have had people sidestep and sidewalk them. Um, her best tracking move is back and right punch, but we more or less already covered that. Uh, no, her tracking overall is not that good um, at close range. At a little bit of a distance, you have a few moves that you can play with, but you run a risk. Um, so you you really want to be careful with that. Uh, I, I've seen I've seen people get hit uh, trying to sidewalk at a distance uh, forward forward and both kicks. Uh, not a move you want to use very much. Um, but if you're trying to be unpredictable, if your opponent doesn't know Subtina very well. It's a thought. Uh, forward forward four. It's it's safe. It's got decent range. It's got not bad damage. Uh, but it it I, I've seen it. I've seen it evaded, so take it for what it's worth. If the move's working for you, keep using it. Uh, and I can, yeah. I can only imagine that safety probably goes hand in hand with that. She's not. I mean, we already talked about how she doesn't really have a whole lot of advantage on a lot of moves, but uh, I, I mean, yeah. just you have to. Yeah, you have to keep your how do your overall safety in the back of your head. You really have to keep that as part of your whole game. Try, try to be, for the most part, safe uh, unless unless you've got an opening of some kind or you're they're being predictable. So, well, uh, tracking, overall, our tracking isn't very good, and and, and well, I think a lot of people know that. I think it's been mentioned um, elsewhere on the boards. Her tracking problem, even in her stances, um, I, I've had. I've had people on the ball get behind me from sidewalking because I just I got into it like from a down forward and three or something, and then I decided to do her little mid-kicks to kind of feel them out, and, you know, they, and they sidewalk right around it like it's no problem. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, uh, that's rough. Um, okay. So, so she, her tracking is shitty, and she gets punished real easy. <laughs> it just sounds like an uphill battle. <laughs> it is. If you like a challenge, if you like a challenge, it's all good. So. Gotcha. Well, that was, um, like, I kind of, you know, write notes and whatnot as, as we go along, and that was, uh, like, the last thing that uh, I really wanted to mention and uh, kind of touch on. So uh, I guess I'll just kind of leave it, uh, kind of give you an open forum. Uh, for, I mean, are, are there any areas that uh, that you can think of that we didn't talk about uh, with Zavina that you think should be mentioned or anything like that? Uh, let's see. Uh, whiffs, punish, uh, frames, tracking, stances, uh, damage. Uh, she's got lots of combo potential. Uh, you can tailor a lot of your juggles, a lot of your damage to not only your opponent, uh, but just to your overall play style. Um, you can you can end your combos, for example, in in the stances. Uh, Scarecrow, for example, you can cancel into the Mantis after her bolt kicks bind, and then you can you know tap up forward and three as an example, and and splat them. Uh, Keep them on the ground. Anything you can do to, to keep your opponents guessing, to keep your pressure up, uh, you know, for tailing your combos, tailing your punishment, uh, your wall game, anything like that. Uh, 
you, know, you just got to keep it going. So, okay, so I guess any any last notes that you wanna you wanna give about this character? I mean, it sounds like you know, uh, wait for your she openings, is, be unpredictable, well, that sort of deal. As, as as I'm mentally going back through this conversation, you know, it 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 does sound on paper that she's just absolute trash, and and maybe even from a high level point of view, sure, that's fine. Um, I, I can give you that without much of an argument. It's all good, but that doesn't mean she's totally worthless. She is a lot of fun. Uh, if you if you know her well enough, maybe as a as a secondary, you can fall back on that for the surprise factor. And she does have a lot of surprise factor. I I, I still think there's some moves in her, like the wall standing three, for example, uh, that a lot of people aren't using, or the wall uh, or the down forward one two to to their full potential. At least not that I've seen. So. Well, yeah, I'm still kind of, you know, still, uh, yeah. I, I mentioned uh, earlier, you know, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Zafina, like the character design and everything, and I don't mean to ignore characters, but I've kind of been ignoring her since Second Six has come out. But uh, she just looks like, unlike a Bob or like a Lars, it just looks like she's incomplete, you know. Like the Namco just kind of I patchworked to, her together to... I have a, it's funny you say that. I have a theory. Okay, tell us your theory. <laughs> I can't prove it, and, and that's okay. It doesn't need to be proven, but here's what I think. And to be fair, whether you like Tekken 6 or not, there, there was a lot of work put into the game. And I'm thinking that she was probably the last character to be fully designed, and I'm guessing the development team finally just at some point, while she was being developed, maybe they were behind schedule, and just said, fuck it, here she is. <laughs> This is it. We're done. Yeah, I mean, that's and that's exactly how it looks, too. I mean, it, it just looks like she has, based on her play style, she has some potential, but they, they just kind of put her together, I don't know, to maybe, like, appease some sort of people. I, I don't even know. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, she caught my eye. I, I got to admit, she caught my eye because when, when they were just releasing the trailers, uh, I was still playing Soul Calibur 4, and uh, when... Tekken 6 started getting heavy with the spoilers, trailers, and information, and, and they showed her, and I think they gave her background and all that, and uh, I've always been fascinated with Egypt, so an Egyptian character I thought was cool, and I started seeing her moves and her different stances, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a, a really creative character, just like Lei and, and Ling, and, and so on, and she is creative, don't get me wrong, it's just she's not real competitive on paper, she's not. So. Well, I guess we can kind of put a put a stamp on the uh, the end of the Zafina stuff then. Um, so I pres- uh, based on you know kind of what we discussed and what I take it that uh, you think she's uh, she's at the bottom of the tier list. At least that's what uh, seems to be the consensus. <laughs> so. I think yeah, I think the overall consensus is she's pretty much on the bottom of the tier uh, list. Uh, in fact, she might even be at the bottom of the sludge of the tier barrel, <laughs> and that's fine. That's fine. It doesn't mean she's not a, a bad character per se. She's still fun. I'll still use her. I plan to use her in tag. She, it looks like she's got some pretty neat stuff for, for shenanigans and, and Oki, and she's got that new down and left kick and some some other stuff. She's got a new stance transition uh, up forward and bolt punches, I believe, and and some other stuff. So we're we're still we're still scraping out some some tag two info on her, and it, it looks like she's gone up the the tier ladder at least a few steps which is good so nice nice well uh yeah, be yeah, best i mean be, best of luck to you <laughs> to have to, i really hope all you right get some tools I appreciate that. um so okay so that's the end of the tech and talk then it's funny you mentioned uh uh caliber four that uh so it sounds like you play caliber are you excited for caliber five at all i i just pre-ordered it uh a few days ago actually uh I don't know if I'm going to go so far as to say excited. I was a little... I know, I think the full character just got... The roster just got released. Uh, I haven't actually studied it yet. I know there's a few characters that I know are returning, and some characters are just given an overhaul with a new name. Well, um, I mean, Soul Calibur, at least the competitive community, I mean, it's going to do what it's always done. I, I mean, they're going to ban some characters, you know. <laughs> it's just it's just what's right? going to happen. I mean, they always yeah. do. There's always some glitchy stuff. And, and, uh, and you know what? It makes the game fun. Yeah. 
there's always been glitches in Tekken. Oh, and yeah. There's glitches Absolutely. in other games, and it is what it is. Absolutely. I say embrace it. Yeah. Unless it's, I mean, if it's that ridiculously broken, okay, I guess that's fair enough, but... Hey. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm actually really excited for it because uh, I've mentioned a few times on the podcast uh, that uh, we actually had a pretty decent scene uh, for Caliber Two here. I loved I loved So Caliber yeah, that Two. Game was amazing. We loved it around here. We it was shit out of it. It was so fun. Hey, hey, Hachi, you can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And just the, the Midwest in general, we had a really good uh, caliber scene, and a lot of guys are really excited for Caliber 5. Uh, us, personally, here, we're actually we're going to get it at midnight, release night. I have the next couple days off, and we're, and we're just going to play the shit out of it. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, Oh, is that so? Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll see you online. <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna make a splash for sure. We're gonna Midwest is uh, is gonna be be doing stuff in Caliber. I guarantee it. But uh, so pumped for that Good. game. Uh, as far as like the Tekken stuff, you know, we're not getting Tekken tag for forever. Um, are you try not to remind <laughs> me? I'm depressed. Yeah. Are you excited for uh, SFX Tekken at all, or or not? Or it, it looks interesting. I haven't really messed with. Uh, Super Street Fighter 4 and, and all that. Uh, I kind of lost my taste for Street Fighter after Street Fighter 3. Um, I'm sure some people are screaming blasphemy right now, but I don't know. I was still hooked, and I, and I think I said that earlier. I was hooked on Tekken uh, for a long, long time. Um, so Yeah, the jury's going to uh, be out for a while. On yeah, I, I'm, I'm very curious to see what, what else they do with, with uh, SS, SFX Tekken. I'm really curious to see what Tekken X Street Fighter will bring to the table. Uh, hopefully it's, so I don't want to say completely new, um, maybe something slightly different from the Tekken engine, uh, maybe a little closer to the Street Fighter engine, but 3D and Tekken. Would be, I think that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, I think a lot more, uh, a lot of people are are more excited for that for the the 3D version, simply because Street Fighter X Tekken looks kind of like Marvel esque, you know, the way like the combos oh. work. So like everybody's like, oh. well, we already have Marvel, we don't we don't really want to yeah. play that. <laughs> but all those supers and sixty hit combos and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. It's, it's Marvel with bigger life bars, is what it is. But. I guess we'll uh, we'll just have to wait and see and, and see if people who are actually playing in a tournament like it. And whatnot. So, well, uh, that's a uh, yeah. You yeah. mentioned Caliber, and we just kind of went off on this tangent. But <laughs> you should hey, do podcast for Caliber. Then. Yeah. Oh, oh no, good. we will. I actually, um, I guess it's been a while since I've uh, mentioned anything about that. But for anybody listening who's uh, who uh, plays Caliber, uh, I mean, we. Uh, you know, Chicago was one of the epicenters for Caliber 2 back in the day. So, uh, I mean, we know all of those guys. I mean, we're going to have a lot of connections with that. So we'll get some big names on those podcasts. And right when they announced Caliber 5 and people were, were saying that it was going to be a lot like Caliber 2, I was like, well, it's done. We're doing a podcast for that game. <laughs> so as long as it doesn't, like, completely suck ass and it's even remotely close to Caliber 2, then uh, we'll be doing a podcast for that. So no worries there. Yeah. It's a, I look for I look forward to those. I'll probably listen to those <laughs> as well. Hey, at least we'll have one listener. That's that's always a plus. But we got to start somewhere. Yeah. And you know, there's still uh, the jury's still out on Sopa and Pipa, so hopefully they won't uh, shut us down. You know, for all that fucking garbage. But. Oh yes, I know. I can't wait. We're gonna we're gonna censor the internet and everybody on it. <laughs> oh, oh I censor shit. It's awesome. It is, and then they just shut down Mega Upload. You know, they had that huge fucking bust. So, God, so yes, so I many know. people well, are crying know, only, about that. It's ridiculous. But. Well, it Mega Upload per se, okay, you know, it, but like anything else. Everything, everything starts small, everything, and this is just the beginning. So if they're going to start with Mega Upload, what's next? Ask yourself that. What's next? Yeah, my, is our, my only problem with Mega cool. Upload and the reason that it doesn't really bug me that they busted them out is, uh, for one, they were blatantly violating copyright piracy oh, laws. Like it was absolutely, illegal. absolutely. And, that, and I'm not saying go and, go and download a bunch of shit illegally. No, no, no. <laughs> In as far as shutting stuff down, I mean, they've, they've shut down a bunch of blog spots and things like that that have been, uh, well, you know, putting uh, stuff up that wasn't theirs. Yeah. And that's cool, fair enough. I, I, I think I know how I would feel if, uh, if I put something out there for sale and, and people just started spreading it around for free. But 
let's be honest here. We're talking about 7 billion people with the, with the ability to communicate and share stuff, whether it is publicly or privately. So taking down Mega Upload, I think, for them was just a, okay, this is where we're going to start, yeah. and it's, in the, you know, it's publicly, but people can send stuff privately. So. No, yeah, I agree. I'm actually, like, I'm very 50-50. I, I don't know how I exactly feel about the whole piracy copyright thing because on the one hand, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. You know, if you make something, I, I myself, I, I'm actually a writer. You know, I play video games for fun. So, but uh, I, I'm a writer uh, by trade. And if I write something, you know, I, I want to keep the rights for something like that. And, you know, I'd like to to make money on it, of course. But at the same time, like, there's a really big part of me that says art and entertainment should be free. And because sort yeah. of like the, uh, I know Google had that whole project of, uh, I, don't, I don't know if they're still doing it, where they were trying to compile all of the written works, you know, everywhere, like a massive uh, online library, essentially. Um, but, uh, you know, like that's, a, like, like that's very intriguing to me. I, I like that idea, but at the same time, I know that artists are getting screwed out of money, <laughs> you know, that's rightfully there. So I, I don't know exactly where I fall on that, but. Yeah, I think I think I think a lot of people will probably go with their own personal, uh, I guess, perspective or experience. Um, for example, I, I put stuff on YouTube, uh, Tekken, Tekken stuff, uh, Soul Calibur stuff, etc. Um, I've actually had people upload it to their own channels, uh, and sometimes I feel kind of flattered. Other times I'm like, uh, this is mine, mm -hmm. and I I should get the credit that. I deserve, you know, by people watching it on my channel kind of thing or wherever it is that I'm putting it uh, as an example. But in the end, I did it. I know it. My name's on it. Uh, it is what it is. So I'm not making any money on it, and I'm actually only really doing it for fun to give back. Uh, so, But if people are looking to, to make money on it, that's pretty much their sole purpose, whether it's to make money on it as recreation or as a living. Yeah, I, I can see why they would be harboring a little anger <laughs> towards people spreading it around. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I was always um, of the the idea that if in, you know, in a perfect world, artists wouldn't have to sell books or movies or you know whatever it may be cds uh, that you know people would buy them if you gave it to everybody for free and you didn't have to worry about uh piracy laws or anything like that that people who were oh what's the right way to say it that people would support you kind of like the um i know it was just a little experiment but uh, i don't know if you remember the when Radiohead put out that CD and they put it out for free oh, download. Free. Yeah, and they just said, don't, you can buy it for whatever you want. So if you don't want to give anything, you can have it for free. But, uh, I, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that support bands, uh, writers, whatever it may be, that, uh, you know, they purchase the stuff, A, to support them, and B, you know, most of the time you get additional content if you do that. So, you know, whether it be a CD case or a book cover or whatever be so but you know that's a perfect yeah. world we don't live in a perfect world so <laughs> right. no. and, and there's a lot of people out there that don't have the resources uh the capacity to support all of the things people bands uh artists groups whatever to the capacity they want to i know i don't uh i support the ones i can when i can uh, i see them in concert i watch their stuff i buy their stuff whatever whether it be music or, or whatever. I'm a, I'm a big music fan, uh, as an example. But uh, uh, the Internet also, in a way, helps spread the word. So it, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Yeah. Oh, no, it, it very it's much is. A thousand copies? It, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, really, conundrum, really. Would you rather sell a thousand copies in today's economy, uh, and a lot of CDs don't even sell that, or would you rather have... 500,000 views on YouTube because somebody put it up, your whole album, song by song by song on YouTube, and have more people go up go to your shows because more people know about you. Well, and that's I'm glad you mentioned, uh, it's funny that you mentioned uh, YouTube because uh, kind of to go in with that sort of ideal market, like for me, uh, I would love, 
and I know a lot of musicians fall into the same category where um, they want to make the money off of their sales, but they're perfectly okay with you downloading music because you're listening to it, you're getting the word out. But uh, with the YouTube thing, it's kind of created a, a new dynamic because now with the internet and the way that internet advertising works, you can actually put your stuff up for free and get paid for the advertising and stuff. And I know that a lot of people do that. They put it up and they just put the, uh, you know, let Google put the ads on there and then they get, uh, I mean, if you get a million views, you're getting a pretty good percentage of those advertising fees. So. Yes, that's correct. Uh, and, and Namco is doing that. Namco is making and putting advertisements on, on their stuff as an example. So, and that's fine. Um, it is what it is. Uh, but if, I would rather watch an advertisement than pay for the YouTube privilege, as I guess would be as one way to, to look at it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree. Well, you know, it's one of those discussions that's going to keep uh, going forever, and I'm sure we could talk another two hours about it, but <laughs> we gotta got to put it into this podcast eventually. Um, but uh, I do like to – unfortunately, I didn't get to do this on our last podcast because uh, – our last guest, his uh, his kid woke up at the end, so he kind of had to make a quick yeah, edit. Quick yeah, Jorio. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I want to throw this at you. We do uh, have a, a little bit of a tradition, a piece we call Sound Off. And uh, essentially, anything you want to rant about or bitch about, or um, some people have chosen to call other people out. Uh, if you want to do that, that's fine, but you don't have to. But uh, I'm going to give you an open forum. I want to hear what makes you angry, what you think should change. Or I guess if you don't want anything to change, you just want to bitch about something, go for it. Oh, so this is like a Family Guy, Peter Griffith, grind my gears kind of segment? Sort of, sort of, yeah. Uh, what? You know, you could have given me advance notice. I probably would have had some epic <laughs> speech prepared. No. No, no, no. That's, that's, that's the whole beauty of it. You know, the first thing that pops into your mind should uh, theoretically be the thing that most pisses you off. But, uh, the thing that most pisses me off. Oh, God, where do I start? I'm usually an easy guy to get along with, too, but, uh, you know, I'm human. Things piss me off. Tell us. Oh, Tell the people. What pisses me off? All right, what pisses me off? Um, being misunderstood can, can piss me off. Uh, not taking the time can piss me off. Uh, what else pisses me off? Those are two real <laughs> general things. Those are super general. Uh, where to start? Oh, I know, I know. Apathy. Oh, apathy pisses me off. I'm not saying be impassioned about everything, but wow, when you don't give a shit about anything, including yourself, you know, that pisses me. It's funny you should say that because uh, I'm kind of in the same boat. I feel the same way. I think you should feel something about, at least a little bit about everything, but uh, the, the funniest people I've ever run into in my life are the people who don't give a shit. <laughs> kind of yeah, how, do you, yeah, how, do you, how do you go about trying to show somebody... Calmly, intellectually, rationally, whatever, about whatever it is, whether it's the dangers of smoking, as an example, or why you want to work out, or why you want to pick up Zafina, when it is, in the end, they just go, well, I don't give a rat's ass. There's nothing you can do, there's nothing you can say that will change their opinion, change their mind, let them see any light of, at the end of the tunnel. And, and it's frustrating, so... That, that that pisses me off. Frustration in general pisses me off. <laughs> so it's just a it's a never ending circle for you. You get frustrated, you get pissed that you're frustrated, then you get frustrated again. And then you get mad that you're frustrated. <laughs> I think there's a lot of guys with that problem. Oh yeah. I think everybody has that problem at least a little bit. But uh, Oh yeah. Well that that's not too oh, bad. That's like I don't know, that's like the most philosophical <laughs> thing. That we've I, had so far. I was completely unprepared. When you said, I'm going to give it to you open form, I figured you were just going to say, oh, you know, if you want to say thanks to anybody kind of thing, uh, all right. <laughs> I mean, sure. I guess if you want to say thank you to no, somebody. That's just kind of what I was expecting. But then you said, what pisses you off? Total, uh, okay, I'm going to have to put the clutch in neutral for a second and hit the brake and think, what the fuck? What pisses me off? So yeah, you, you really kind of threw me off there. Well, hey, that's good. That, that's the, that's the goal, you know. We want some, want surprise, want uh, want real emotion. <laughs> Yeah, spontaneity, I like it. So uh, I'm actually going to um, steal a little bit of thunder and at least mention uh, something that uh, really pissed since uh, since we just had uh, the weekend of 
of f- football. I don't know if you watch football at all, but uh, for anybody out there that does, um, the Super Bowl sucks. I mean, it's that simple. Like, no, unless you are a New England Patriots fan or a New York Giants fan, you, you hate the Super Bowl. You hate it. It sucks. This is like one of the worst NFL seasons ever, ever. Ever. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not watching. I've watched every Super Bowl since I've been alive, and and I'm not watching this one because I refuse. It's dumb. It's just it's the most going to be the most boring Super Bowl ever. It's like the biggest TV event in the history of man. It's going to be boring. I hate it. Hate it. As a but on the flip, but on the flip side, what if it's one of the most epic games? Uh, no, I'm not going to watch it. It's two teams that no one cares about. Uh, <laughs> oh man. My Facebook page is just filled up <laughs> with, with so the mine. Super Bowl. Um, everybody at work it, with their fantasy football and everything else is all, uh, that's all I'm going to hear about when I, which I have to leave in about 90 minutes for the next. I don't know how long is the Super Bowl, so I guess I kind of feel your pain on that. It's just so dumb. It's so boring. There's yeah, it's dumb. And it's as uh, somebody, a uh, friend of mine, put it: uh, not even the Super Bowl is hype anymore. So <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna get some shit for saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Uh, if you ever want to get into somebody's head, a sports fan, you just tell them that watching sports is a subconscious gay manifestation. Hmm. They will freak out. If they figure out what you're trying to say, they will freak out. <laughs> if they figure out what you're trying to say. I mean, I guess you, oh, could, just, yeah. uh, you could dumb I it have, down and be I like, have. yo, dude, football's gay. <laughs> I, no, I'm serious. You start giving them examples, you know. Guys running, these, these men that are all huge and glistening with sweat, running around with a ball in their hands, grabbing, smacking each other on the ass just because they went and crossed the line. And You know, you get what I'm saying. I think uh, just – and go uh, – I've had guys just scream at me from just overwhelming anger, and it's the funniest thing because I'm just fucking around with it. <laughs> yeah, many a many joke have uh, has been made for such a thing. I still, honestly, I love sports. I still don't get wrestling. I still don't get it, but it is what it is, I guess. Well, that's uh, yeah. that was pretty good. That was a pretty uh, good uh, cap to this uh, this podcast. Um, so, I, I guess uh, any last words? I mean, I get it, you mentioned a thank you. I guess if you want to thank somebody, now, now would be the time to do so. Uh, uh, not really. Just um, you know, obviously, you know, to you, Scott. Thanks a lot for uh, letting me talk. Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty fun. It was pretty insightful in, in other ways. Uh, we got to talk about the internet and sports and other stuff. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. But I, I guess I guess from a more topic related uh, thank you. Uh, there's there's a lot of people that uh, that inspire me, that motivate me when I play Tekken, uh, whether they be posting on the boards or whether they're putting up their match vids or whether they're putting up their combo vids or whatever. Just guys, keep just doing what you're doing. I like that. I like that a lot. And yeah, I will. Uh, I will echo those sentiments because um, you know Tekken. Everybody says Tekken is dead right now, which is hard to argue against that. But uh, you know, we got to keep it alive. Keep keep playing. Keep uh, keep watching vids. Keep posting on the boards. Keep trying to spread uh, the knowledge and the love, and, uh, and we can keep it going. So uh, I guess back to you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, you know, I don't know Dick about uh, Zafina, but now I feel like I know a little bit. Uh, which is, uh, you got I think you got to you got to start. You got to start. <laughs> which, go into go into practice mode. Call some buddies over and have a blast. And you know? If nothing else, the people uh, who listen to this podcast, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of them are probably just looking for insights into Safina to play against her. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. I think <laughs> I think most of the people that that will probably be listening to this are probably going to say, hey. You know, I might I might not have known that about this or this, and they and and. That's fine, but most play, people that play against Athena, they already know that you can probably sidestep and sidewalk a lot of her stuff and that she's unsafe and, and so on. Um, I guess hopefully there's a few Zafina players out there that maybe hopefully they'll go, hey, that's a good idea. I think I'll try that. And That's, that, that's what I'm aiming for, really. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks again for coming on. I uh, appreciate you spreading the knowledge uh, to everybody. Uh, and just for all you listeners out there, uh, I mean, we mentioned that uh, Zafina is bottom of the barrel and whatnot. Uh, we still have characters left. I promise we will get to all of them. Uh, and just to kind of um, uh, echo something that I said before, uh, 
I mean, this podcast is free. Uh, I get who, who I can, you know, hopefully knowledgeable people onto the podcast, but I recognize, especially some of the episodes that uh, I did without an expert guest, that uh, sometimes they're not always the best podcast, so I do have a list of the characters that not I plan on going back and redoing. So for those... Not everybody has to be a, an evil winner, though, right? Yeah. To, to no, no. The character. no, yeah, absolutely. But uh, but I know, like, I recognize, like, there's some uh, earlier episodes when we before we started uh, getting uh, guests on that uh, we probably could have given some more information, been a little bit more thorough. Um, and uh, even well, stuff that's more recent, I know... Uh, Got some negative yeah, but stuff, for so. the most part, you're you're following. You know, you're talking about the general stuff, and I, it, it just it, it falls onto the person, the guest in question, to uh, fill in the blanks. You know, I, you said yourself, you don't want to do a move by move breakdown, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. So. Cut yourself, cut yourself a little bit of slack. Oh, no, I cut myself a lot of slack, but uh, at the same time, um, you know, I have to be my, my own biggest critic, and I am the host. You know, I do organize these things, and I do put it up for uh, for all to listen to, so I want to uh, give a good product. But, uh, yeah, nope, but, just, enough, yeah, but I just want to let everybody out there know that uh, I do know that there are some uh, – some podcasts out there, uh, some characters that uh, we are going to redo, but I'm not going to do those until I've already done every character at least once. Uh, so we still got some coming, uh, so stay tuned. Uh, thank you again, uh, Sith Lord, for coming on. And uh, that, that is a wrap, people. Thank you very much for listening, and we will catch you.